my 20 week old golden can loose leash walk in my neighborhood but not in public so 20 weeks old that's how old four so and a half math. months four okay. and a half months sure Sure. Um, that's pretty normal. Yeah. It takes a lot of time for a dog to get used to it. Um, what I do is called CGC, Canadian Good Citizen Training. And what that does is actually introduces a dog to being in like, bigger areas with more distractions. And it takes weeks and weeks of conditioning in low stimulus areas with small jumps before I could ever get to a dog like uh, we have Hermosa Pier. 400 people walking along the pier, anything close to that, it takes a lot of practice. So if you want to start building up to that, if you have a local park by your house, try walking to the local park and then walking around the park, like the outer perimeter. Just let him see or he or she, whatever it is, yeah. let him or, he, him or her see inside of the park and then build up through there and then eventually start walking through the park, walking by certain picnic tables with kids playing. You got to build it up slowly. I yeah, like, I, I like, that. yeah, of course. <laughs> I like to say pressure on, pressure off. So it's, it's basically what he said, just to try to maybe be more specific, is go to the park, work outside of a busy area, which to your puppy, outside of a busy area means whatever you need to do to get your puppy to focus. So that could be 50 yards away from the kids area. Work your puppy for five, 10 minutes, and then go closer to the kids area. Work them, that's pressure on. So you're you know, doing food work and working them next to it, and then go pressure off again. So this is how you build up more tolerance for distractions. Uh, something, you know, he mentioned CGC. The thing about CGC that uh, can be difficult but is crucial for your puppy getting comfortable faster in public is for you to be the only thing of value. And so what I mean by that and what Sparky means when he says CGC is the puppy's not greeting dogs or people or anything like that. They're just working, focusing on you. And it's not a leisurely stroll. It's, I might pick up my puppy, go to outside the kids area, put my puppy down and do sit, come over and over again. And then if it turns on a six foot leash, you know, just let's go, turn, maybe walk 10 steps, stop and sit, maybe another. Um, you'll walk like 10 steps and turn, 10 steps and turn. So it's not really a walk. You're, you have to work your puppy, keep your puppy's focus, and let them exist in their environment, not interact. That way they don't start seeking value elsewhere because that's a whole other thing that's really tough to uh, curb. So do, hopefully that gives you some Do you some expect tips. all the dogs to take food in a situation like that or half of them, a quarter of them? What's your new this, work up to that? That's a really good question. I think it greatly depends on, if I work with a puppy, mm -hmm. I expect them to take food unless they're fearful puppies. Okay. But you guys at home, you may not be building food drive. You may not be having your puppy work for all their meals. So they don't understand how to take food even when there's distractions. You have to play around with, with that, what you want from your puppy, um, how much food drive you want to build, things like that. What awesome. do you say? I usually, right in between, fearful puppy, no, probably not taking food, overstimulated, jumpy, crazy puppy, I need to work them under threshold. Previous videos, we've explained a little bit more, I'll give you a little breakdown. Threshold is where your dog wants to jump and go crazy for the people. Working them below threshold was those 10 steps that Bethany said to walk away from them. Distance. Distancing, you're literally getting to that off mode. She said yeah. on, off. On is when he's jumping towards the people, overexcited. Off is when you take those 10 steps away and now he takes food again from you. Yep. So working them under threshold. Utilizing space. Yes. Utilizing your space to work your puppy under threshold where they can still be challenged but semi-focus on you. That's the pressure on, honestly. If you go too far in and they've lost their mind, it, then you, you got to give space. Training sessions basically stop, and now you're just trying to get your puppy away from the craziness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Uh, someone on here asked, do you train tricks? Now, I don't know if you mean, does pu the Puppy Academy train tricks? Mostly, we focus on trying to create a calm family dog. That's our goal, as well as educating people about their breed and the dog that they have. Now, we do uh, some bonus work, with the puppies that have already learned all of their basics and we'll do some some trick training as far as answering questions about specific tricks i'm not sure either of us would be your go-to there is a crazy amount of online trick training stuff 
Um, there's definitely an art to it. Trick training can really help with your timing because being able to time a no, if you can time a good and you can properly trick train, then you can trick train for the, for the no as well. Um, or timing, you know, helps with timing. But, uh, but you really want to focus on your basics first. For instance, don't teach give paw before you teach oh, down. No. <laughs> things, things like that. But if you have every any questions. Every point is just paw, paw, paw. I'm just waiting every time. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if you have any questions, we can try to answer them for you. We'll probably end up turning it into behavioral, but anyway, you could try. It's how our brains it's work. It's how our We're brains sorry. work, yeah. I was doing dock diving the other day with Dakota and a Malinois. Dock diving is where yeah. you, you teach them how to how to jump off a dock into the water. And um, I had this lab I was trying to teach how to swim and potentially dock dive. It felt so weird building drive. Because <laughs> building drive is, is easy. I used to do it a lot when I was younger, but then I went more into the calm family dog because that's the hard, that's the hard thing right now in our culture. Culture that everybody's missing but um, it's definitely trick training falls under the building drive so you usually say they'll wait till your dog is fully trained on the obedience before yeah. doing trick training because of what Bethany mentioned before asking for a down before teaching the shake way more important and you know what what type of dog do you want to have you know they were going off on a tangent but I think we've got time w what type of dog do you want to have because there are trainers like Sparky and I that do family dog training and they do accountability for bad decisions. They, they don't mind correcting dogs, but they do heavy sport dog work and they do very, very fast paced obedience work. So they have high levels of accountability for obedience. So you have a dog that does a really great job listening. They'll, they'll listen to their owner and they're very well trained and they're very crisp and very active families but the dog is excited all High the drive. time. Yeah, all, you'll they're, see they're people using like the ball with the little rope and like swinging around the ball on the rope. For That's everything, for drive. obedience, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then accountability, corrections if they don't listen. But for us, when we go into homes that have had that type of training, they're like, is there a way to just get them a little calmer in the house? Well, that's kind of more our, our forte. That's our speed. It's our speed, yeah. But it really just depends on what you want in your dog. If you want to do a ton of trick training as well as obedience training, it's not that you can't and you won't have a nice family dog. I like dogs that lay around most of the time until I want them to have energy. Um, not a dog that has energy all the time, but yet they're highly trained. Those are actually two very different things. So, you know. Two just, different jobs. Yeah, just what do, you, what do you want in your dog? What do you want to nurture, you know, in your dog? Okay, and then sometimes when people get a Malinois, they don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Uh, Can I see Spark, maybe? Is that you? Is that me? Am I Spark? You're Spark. Can I see Spark? <laughs> I don't know. Can you guys see me? No. Am I am I off screen or something? Throw me a bone, guys. He's not as he's not as important, guys. He's not as important. Am I off screen? Because I'll I'll scoot over. I see a little smiley face. <laughs> All right. Scoot over. But no, then you're gonna. Miss they want to see me too, Bethany. God. Okay. I'm in. Scoot over when you answer TikTok questions. There you okay, go. I like it. There you I go. Like it. Then get back crowding, no. crowding me. I feel like I'm off screen. <laughs> Call I'm, HR. I'm important too. <laughs> Okay, all right, moving on, moving on. Okay, so we have a long one uh, from Mary Tang. Uh, she says she loves the Ask a Puppy Trainer show. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Mary. Okay, um, we have a six-month-old, so we're getting into adolescence. That's what this tells me. Six-month-old Irish Doodle. We've done extensive foundational training. Excellent. Just recently, he has started to gruff and bark at non-existent things. Mainly, he hears random small noises um, or a noise that we don't hear. We're not sure. Is he trying to protect us? Uh, he's usually doing this towards the door of the stairs. Is he going through a fear period? Uh, it's a couple of woofs. It's not him flying off the handle yet. Um, let's see. He doesn't bark at people. He loves people, but he'll bark when he hears like a gate open, things like that. Uh, we'll distract him. Is there any way to help control this? We guide him away with his leash. We treat him to fo when he focuses on us for sitting down. Uh, and he goes right back to the spot. Happens again. Okay. All right. Can I start? Can I start? Can I start? Can I start? You can start. I got, some, I got something. Though. Okay. Well, I'm going to start with this. And then he'll give, I'll give like this ridiculous thing She's that gonna you. going to paint the picture. I'm going to paint the picture that you probably don't care about. And then he's going to help. And then I'll jump in with the meaningful stuff. But I've been, I've been uh, listening to a lot of trainers talk about this lately. It's, it's, really, it's really a huge misconception for trainers as well. This is not like even normal dog owners. Uh, myself, uh, normal trainers as well. 
It's a huge misconception that just because a dog is barking that they're protecting you. Uh, basically, dogs see space as territory. So if you have given your puppy a kind of free roam of some of the house, they don't view it the way we do. They view it as territory. So now you've got a six month old dog who is just going through a natural phase of getting hormones and becoming territorial over the space that I'm gonna assume you might be giving him, okay? Even if he's dragging around a leash. So what I mean by that is just that he's probably not protecting you. Uh, he's just becoming a little territorial of his home, of his area that he's been given because he feels entitled to do so. And even if you have been crazy strict and you haven't given him space, a lot of dogs do it anyway because it's a really natural phase of training. A lot of dogs go through aggression periods in adolescence. That's really, really natural. They're a little hard to manage for a lot of people, but it's it's actually pretty natural. Um, it's like a teenager doing all kinds of sort of mean things to you trying to figure out their boundaries in, in life They're pushing you yeah yeah exactly so uh, so anyway just to kind of paint that picture he might end up being a little nervous and protecting his own space but it's highly highly doubtful he's protecting yours what accidentally happens is say you have someone come in the house and it starts to be a big barking fit you might notice that he might be worse with one family member than another family member. That's still not because he's protecting you. It probably is because he feels empowered uh, by certain people in the home to just behave that way, to be in charge, basically, because he feels like he can. You know, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. It's easy to work on, which is what we're gonna get into, but the, the concept behind it, the reasoning it's happening is really as simple as that. He sees it as territory and he's allowed to, he feels like he's allowed to, and he's an adolescent. Okay, go. All right. Okay, I'm gonna play into that a little bit. That's my fun behavioral course, stuff. Scoot yeah. over, it's all, it's all good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when your dog has all this freedom, like Bethany was saying, you're basically giving this huge space for your dog to defend. But here's the thing. Territory is hard to defend when it's one animal in this large space. If you have a big home, notice that he runs to one side of the house, barks, runs to another window and barks over there. It's basically him saying, I don't feel confident enough to be able to defend this territory. So you get more reactivity, more of that barking. There's over time, it hasn't gotten time, too yeah. bad yet. But, but there's something yeah. that you wrote that made me think about that is you can redirect him away. He'll take food, he'll do a sit, he'll do it down. But after you give him the food, he runs right back to that place. You gotta stop. So, yeah, do you think maybe he's even associating bark, 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 go check in with mom, get food, get rewarded for, the, for a job well done, and then go handle it one more time. There's something yeah. that crossed my mind. For, for instance, when dogs do bite work, like canine you know, police dogs mm -hmm. and sport dog work, they bite, then they're told off, then mm -hmm. they're rewarded, and it's a redirection. So at six months old, you gotta get rid of the redirection. Mm -hmm. We have a plan for you though. However, okay, do you want, do you want no, to know no, plan? Go. I was gonna drop go, go, into go. it. So one of the things that I do if I have that situation is one, I limit access to the area where he can see out of the window and he's doing most of his barking. But hey, I get it guys, sometimes people have a large area and you're gonna get like 30 play pins or 30 like boundary, like barriers to block off these big areas. Well, she said even hearing the gate, not even seeing, just okay. hearing the well, gate. Well then I'm gonna let you tackle the hearing. I'm just gonna tackle what I do is, which is put a leash on the dog's collar, like flat collar or harness. Harness if it's a small dog, we don't want him just jumping off the chain on a flat collar. But if it's a bigger dog, a lab, a shepherd, I usually just do it to the flat collar so I have a little bit more control over that head. And then I'll attach that leash to myself and they get to follow me around. Because now what are they doing? They're taking their cues from me, their leader. Oh yeah, when they're out of crate. See what, see what I do there? When, they're out, in there? when yeah. they're out of crate, yeah. In the crate, no big deal. Yeah. Quieter spot, cover the crate, put on some white noise, just things like that. Jump but no, you. that was that was good. Um, yeah, that was good. So, making them follow you around, literally and mentally, getting them in follower mode. That's really good. So, there's there's two ways to to tackle this. I'm not saying that saying no, come sit, uh, and redirecting with the leash to food is bad. Uh, it's just if that's the only thing you're doing, they can definitely develop that habit where it's like bark and then look at mom and come and sit in food and then they get you know startled again by a noise and bark and then they'll start to put that cycle together so i'm not saying that it doesn't work for every dog there's been a few cases where um, a less intense version 
it, it can kind of curb it a little bit, but it doesn't sound like that's gonna be the case with your Irish Doodle. So what I would do is uh, you need something to kind of suppress that momentum a little bit. You could use, at six months old, you could use a pet corrector squirt, which is, so the dog's tethered to you, and you also have like, uh, you know, it on you. So you have to prepare for this. I don't know how much crate training you do, you'd be doing this all day long, which is tough, but if you wanna tackle this, that's how you do it. And you could start with a pet corrector squirt, but you don't wanna use it all day. Like the whole goal of something like this is to just get a little bit of an edge. And the reason you want a little bit of an edge is because right now, the dog's probably popping off really quickly at things. If you use a no and maybe body blocking, uh, uh, spatial pressure, one, moving, one more time, one more time. moving into your dog with intent, there's got to be intent behind it. You can't just softly bump it up. I'm like joking around, but I mean, it's like, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't need that. I don't need that from you. Moving into your dog or a little pet character squirt. The whole idea behind that is to try to suppress it temporarily do not try to use suppression as a main form of training that's bad but just temporarily that way maybe the next time it happens you'll start to just see an alertness alert ears or him like thinking about barking the whole the whole goal is to start to see the the behavior the little precursors like going after the fuse before ears. yeah ears going after the fuse before the explosion um going after intent like oh what is that and then that is when you can be like, hey, come on, let's go, and interrupt that cycle of arousal. And then I would do more movement. So I'll, if he's tethered to you, I would turn, walk away, place, good, nice and calm. And uh, I probably wouldn't use food with a six month old, but if you want to, to get a little bit of leverage, if you're struggling, try it, you know, try it with food, but you need to get them completely away from the situation. And it can't just be a pull of the leash. You've got to interrupt that cycle of arousal with something a little bit more, uh, I don't know, invasive, which, and by invasive, I just mean like he, he looks at you like, oh, I, uh, what? What? You know, I'm not supposed to do that. Block. The, the body, yeah, block, body block. Maybe even yeah. a little bit of leash pressure. And what I mean by is like leash guidance. I step in and I kind of guide the leash in a different direction just to move Firmly. the dog away. This isn't yeah. soft. This so, is pretty firm. I don't have my water bottle. Usually that's how I explain it. Here's <laughs> me. Here's my dog. I'm not like, hey, hey, hey. It's like a, hey, hey. I step in fast and the dog's like, whoa, kind Let's of go. backs off. Think of it like you're trying to take the spot that they're standing in and they need to get out of your way. Ooh, that was yeah, good. I like that one. I really like that one. Good, yeah. And then immediately like, let's go. Put him in another room or at least 10 feet away, depending on how much space you have to do with. Target him to place. If you haven't taught place yet, you oh, need so to. It's so, so, so good. Watch our videos. Yeah. There's, it's all over our videos. Let him really settle down. And yes, he might alert again while he's in place. Hey, no. And you can block too, just even standing just in front of the dog. In. You hear the sound over here. His alertness goes to there. I block here. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> she was ready for it. She blocks there, and he's like, "Oh, hey, 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 mom, how you doing?" And it's you become the focus. You become what he's paying attention yep. to. By the way, that's only one part of the training. So let me get to the second part really quick. So that's that's <laughs> really organic. That this will be quick because it's easy, and you'll you'll totally get this. So that's when it happens organically. But then you also need to work on it. So what I mean by that is sending your kids or your spouse or your friend once a week, honestly, preferably every day for two weeks. That would be ideal. But send them around the corner and jiggle the gate, and then wait thirty seconds. That way you can. That way the dog can kind of like be like what. What is what is that? And you just say your dog's name, something, I don't know, like, hey, they look at you, good food, good food, good food. No bark, no growl, no Yeah, bark. yeah, this is yeah. way, way before he has a chance to feel like he's supposed to do anything. And then they jiggle the, the gate again or walk around the house and you're like, hey, good food, good food. And it's rapid reward treating, not like this, but it's like good food. You maintain focus. Eye contact. He kind of looks away. You're like, oh, good food. You also have to work on it in controlled sessions. That's how you really change perception. Perception of how the dog views it. But honestly, at the end of the day, don't be so hard on yourself. This is a really natural thing for a dog to go through. Sometimes it sticks with them and they will always be barkers. But if you put in some of this work, it'll be more manageable. I can promise you that. Okay. Can you explain what Pet Corrector is and where to get it? Oh yes, Pet Corrector you can get on Amazon. Um, they Do they still have it no, at no, Petco? Don't, don't get it from Amazon. Pet you can only get the smallest little bottle. It's super That's expensive. 
I looked at it just yesterday. It changes on Amazon all the time. Different sellers. Go to Petco, stuff. PetSmart, Sentinella, Pet Feed. I think PetSmart st or Petco stopped selling them. Nope, it was there yesterday. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> it is a little red can that squirts out air. And it's like think of like an air horn, but instead of the horn, it's the. Spit everywhere. Yeah, you did. Really. Sorry. All on Ricky. No. <laughs> All right, perfect. All right, Elaine, my one-year-old Wheaton Terrier is suddenly terrified of garbage trucks slash noise. Help. That's pretty normal. Sounds like maybe going through a fear phase. One-year-old, a little bit old for the yeah. fear phase. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. And what we do is I literally will play the sounds. I'll play the sound YouTube when they're in the crane. I mean, you can literally Google or uh, YouTube garbage truck. And there's an hour and a half playlist for it mm -hmm. of all the different sounding garbage trucks, all the different noises. Yep. And we'll eventually start working our dog through that. And what that means is my dog knows come sit, heel down and stay. And I'll do all of those commands. Whatever's around, easy. Yes, whatever's, whatever's easy, easy around that noise that's being created by my phone after they build up a little bit of comfort just from hearing it from the speaker. Yeah. And then eventually you'll even get to the point to where you can do that inside your house when the garbage truck goes by and then build up to backyard, front yard, on the side yeah. We're talking like six months to a year of working on this before yeah, it's really super hard. strong comfort builds. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. um, are you done? I'm, I'm good. Okay, so, oh, well, so that's how you really work on the perception of how he views the garbage truck. At the end of the day though, when your Wheaton loses his mind because maybe you didn't, maybe the garbage truck just came around the corner or something startled surprised, him, yeah. just surprised him and you weren't able to give distance and get in front of it and do your food work and all that stuff and you're like, <laughs> she might even be at home right now and be like, he won't take food, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you get startled or you're just too close um, for your dog to focus on you, you completely change tactics. This goes for all fear issues. You take a deep, big deep breath, you stand up straight, you have a straight spine, you put your head forward and go, let's go. And you get out of there. You don't run, you don't rush, but you take control. Stop bending over, trying to convince your dog to take food because it's not so bad. If you're not getting what he mentioned, which is like easy obedience routine of, okay, okay, sit and break in food and sit and break in food. And you're not getting at least some nervous, uh, he, he'll be nervous, but some, um, I don't know, he's paying attention, you know, to some degree. If you're not feeling that and he's just worried, then you bending over trying to convince him is just gonna worry him more than your two soft people trying to deal with the garbage truck. You're feeding the anxiety. You're feeding it, You're yeah. rewarding the anxiety if the anxiety is strong enough that he won't take it. Feeding the anxiety. You've got some winners today. I don't know. You're on your game. Once in a while, I mean, on we've, your we've game been doing this today. for a few months. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's about time, but I'm just saying some really good ones are in there. Okay, so <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, you're, you're, when you start getting compromising like that, you're feeding the anxiety. So the moment you see that you're over threshold, and we kind of talked about what over threshold um, is earlier in this live, um, that, that's when you're like, okay, changing, I'm in control. It's like you're in a dark alley with your kid and your kid's terrified. You can't be terrified with your kid. Your kid will need therapy forever. Instead, you gotta pretend that you're not scared. And you're like, we're fine, we got this, we're going to the car, you know? Let's go, and it's just gotta be that attitude change. It's a huge change. So just keep that in mind. All right, move on. Cool, let's go there. Um, how do you introduce a new puppy to your other pup at home? <sighs> <laughs> that was a big sigh. A you, can you gotta of take worms. it. Yeah, you gotta take it now. All right. Actually, no, your answer's gonna be longer than mine. No, and just take it. And then there's some fun light ones after. Okay, okay good. All right, it, all right, right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so uh, don't screw up your other dog, basically. So if your other dog is just has had it with your puppy, don't expect your other dog to train your puppy. It's the biggest oh, mistake in the book mistake, yeah. because they get upset. They're like, why did you do this to me? And they build a grudge, even if they play sometimes. If, they, if it keeps going to the point where the, the other dog has had it or the other older puppy has had it, um, you keep putting them in that position. They can really build a grudge. And then your younger puppy might get a real attitude when they go through adolescence. Anyway, lots of just bad stuff can happen. So you gotta watch both of your dogs. How is both of your dogs dealing with the situation? And so if one dog gets unsure, insecure, is showing a lot of body language, signals of like you need to calm down you need to intervene and back them up and that could be the older dog or the young puppy it could be either e 
either one. Just make sure you're advocating for that dog. The other thing is it should not be both dogs just now have access to each other all the time. That's the worst thing you could do um, unless you just want them to be their own entity together and never listen to you and never care about what you have to say and handle all of their issues to, you know, in-house uh, in -house among each other, which means potential bites and aggression and, and, and a lot of a lot of conversations. That follows dogs. the mentality of let them work it out and that's not our mentality. It's we not. Unless, you're, unless you've got two dogs that are working together daily on a farm type of uh, situation, that is totally different, but I, I doubt- They're working it out whether you know it or not. Yeah, yeah, they, they're having conversations every day. That's a totally different scenario than probably what you're in. It's probably a normal home, apartment, suburban neighborhood. It's very different. So anyway, uh, keep that in mind. Um, it's really just Let advocate. Them respect each other's space. Yeah. Older dog has the same area he's always had. Short periods Young, of time yeah, short with each other, short, supervised. Young dog is doing like crate training or playpen yeah. or following you on a leash or something ooh, like that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So the older dog or puppy really needs to see you do your, I'm pointing at you now, your due do diligence. your due diligence with the new puppy in the home. Because if you're letting that puppy just pee in every corner and chew on everything and bark at everything or bite you constantly and you're not learning, maybe from a, a trainer one-on-one, -on -one, how to handle those moments, the other dog could really take issue with it in a lot of ways. He may start doing it too. Yeah. Oh yeah, he could do it too. That's right. It could fuel into him and him start disrespecting and not listening to you more. Um, or he could just take start taking care of it for you and, and be really intense with your new puppy. So my point is this could just go a lot of different ways. So just advocate short sessions together. Watch how both dogs are feeling. Um, yeah. Anything else to add? Nope, that's it. We're going to keep going. Okay, cool. Next one. What's the fun stuff? What is the most unusual name you've had at the Puppy Academy? Oh man. Uh, when people name their boy dogs girl names and girl dogs boy names. Oh my god. That's, that's a good one. Like we've had Batman. Yeah, we have had Batman. I love Batman. I love he Batman. Was a husky. Yeah. He was a good it's one. hard though. The hard ones for us are, are what he said yeah. for sure. Didn't we have a. We've had some names that were uh, other languages. Oh, we have a. Torment. Yeah, we have Torment. We, we, yes, we, we struggle. That's our current student. We struggle with that those. That's not true. That's beautiful. Whatever. I've been watching a lot of Vikings, guys. We're so plain, we're normal this. people. We're not <laughs> interesting names. What is it indoor barking sound sensitivity is carrying to outdoors? Oh, what that is a... We can't... You'll have to repost that one next week. We cannot tackle that in, in what is, one minute. What is the question? What is indoor... I think indoor? it was typed off one of the earlier responses you were talking oh, about. Oh, okay, what is indoor barking... Slash sound sensitivities carrying to outdoors. Same thing. Work them under threshold. Start doing more of the on-off stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same exact thing. If it's carrying on the outdoors, then you guys got to build a threshold and then find what's under threshold. Yeah. Maybe it's 200 feet away from the sound yeah. and then they're barely, barely just glancing at it. You're yeah. doing what she said, firm up, good body language, hey, let's go, move on, come on. Yeah. You gotta take charge. Um, I, can we do the, sure, the easiest dog yes. to train? Go ahead, Sparky, what's the easiest dog to train? Golden Retriever. No, yeah. no, yeah. I get so many Goldens that resource guard food Cavalier, and Charles. they're out of control. There you go. Oh, you like the Cavalier. It's not easiest oh, for oh. you. It's not easiest for you. It's easiest for normal people. I love the labs. That's like my go-to. Are Dobermans easy to train? No. 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 <laughs> No. It's not about training, guys. It's about behavior. Temperament. 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 Is Thank you. Temperament. I had some it's random guy approach me at the park yesterday. He goes, "What's better, male or female?" I go, "I, I don't know. I mean, what, what's the male and what's the female act like?" He goes, well, "I don't know. I just want to know." I said, "There is no answer to that. It's whatever dog you find. You got to do a temperament test. If they're jumping all over you, you're gonna spend A, B, and C with me. Yep. If they're jump, paw, paw, sit, I'm like, now you're spending A." You're just you're you're getting different temperaments. That's your retriever. That's things. why you yeah. like your retrievers. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, it's like there's just so many, so many variables. Don't get a pug. Why not? So let, let them get so it. Stubborn. Yeah, but you don't do anything with pugs except you know let them run around the yard and take them for a walk, and they won't eat you usually. So That's true. That's if true. you do that to a German Shepherd, they'll eat they'll you, or, you or someone else. 